this video is going to um, look at some of the evidence for uh, uh, late Bronze Age Minoan and Mycenaean contacts uh, with um, outside cultures. And in this case, we're going to turn a look at some evidence from Egypt um, at a tomb called the Tomb of Rekmire, who was a vizier. Um, a vizier is sort of a, uh, uh, a very important official under the pharaohs. Uh, frequently, you see, he's called sort of a secretary of state. You know, he deals with foreign affairs. Um, and as you'll see, this is uh, borne out in what I'm about to show you. Uh, now, the, in, in, in um, Egypt, uh, you're probably familiar with the Great Pyramids, um, which are up to the north in Lower Egypt. Uh, those, you know, the use of pyramids fell out of, you know, stopped many hundreds of years before this. Basically, they were, um, they stuck out like sore thumbs, um, and they were chock-a-block full of gold, etc. And so they were robbed almost immediately. Um, and after a while, the Egyptian pharaohs realized it wasn't a good idea uh, to be uh, buried in such conspicuous um, tombs. And um, later on as well, in the 18th dynasty, the power would move, um, or the capital, I should say, would move from Lower Egypt towards Upper Egypt to the south at the city of Thebes. And across the river from Thebes on the west side of the Nile, where, by the way, where burials were put, the pyramids are on the left side of the Nile, right, where the sun sets on the west side. Now, back down to Thebes, across the river, uh, is the Valley of the Kings and the Valley of the Queens. These are uh, built to be um, hidden. Um, you, 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 so you can go to the Valley of the Kings now and see, uh, see you know, the, the, the entrances uh, to the tombs. That wasn't the case in the past. Um, and the map that I showed you in the last slide, the... Uh, uh, you know, it should, there's a whole bunch of structures, um, but when you get in, in, uh, on the west side across from the city of Thebes, but when you get back into the Valley of the Kings and Queens, um, they are hidden. They are now exposed, um, and they've been being excavated for a while now. And just to give you an idea of what they look like, here's just one uh, two, random tomb here. And you descend down these, you know, spectacular uh, um, steps into these very, very, very long um entranceways uh, going down to the tomb, and that they're chock-a-block full of painting. Uh, here we see another um, uh, example of just what it's like to walk into these, uh, down into these tombs. I guess actually these, these two are looking back out at the, at the, at the entranceway. Um, but nevertheless, it gives you an idea of what the um, feel was for these. And it's amazing because they're so well painted. Um, and obviously, you know, uh, there was, you know, many years with many craftsmen making and painting these tombs, only to have them completely covered once the person died and was buried. Now, with our, back to our guy, Rec Mure, as I said, he was a, um, he was a vizier, um, and he dealt with foreign, um, uh, 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 you know, um, uh, visitors. Um, I mean, that's, you know, f visitors of state uh, that were foreigners. And here we see on, the, um, on this slide one panel where it shows five or four rows of uh, people. Actually, there's five rows, but the bottom one isn't well preserved, of, of different peoples bringing um, offerings or gifts. Um, and they are divided up by nationality. And as what I'll show you in a moment is we think the third from the top, um, or the third one down, in fact, um, shows uh, um, Cretans. And I'll show you how this operates. Cretans, or Minoans, right? Here's a drawing of them. Um, and uh, uh, the, uh, this makes it clear. Oh, I misspoke. I'm sorry. It should have been the, the second register from, from the top, not the third. The second register from the top are the Minoans. Um, and so we see different peoples of different tribes. We see um, on the top... Uh, I believe those are the Nubians. Um, oh, no, those are the people from Punt, uh, near Nubia, where the, uh, uh, um, and where Somalia is today. And they're bringing up uh, myrrh trees, you can see there on the left, and, or, or uh, 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 logs of ebony, as well as animals like lions and a 
goat there, um, longhorn goat of some sort, and we can see a uh, we'll see a, a, a monkey and a um, a, a baboon, a blue monkey and a baboon. We get down to the next register. This is the Keftiu. Uh, that's what the uh, uh, Cretans or the Egyptians called the Minoans, the Keftiu, K E F T I U, and then. Um, uh, then we have the Nubians in three, and then the Syrians in four, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we don't have to go through all of them, but they are coming from the left, moving to the right, and bringing offerings that are being then recorded um, by the first person to the right of the stack of offerings in writing, and then somebody overlooking him. Uh, and so I want to show you this. This is, um, these were the, uh, uh, um, uh, the Puntites, people of Punt, um, and the Nubians uh, uh, bringing, you know, these um, um, exotic animals from the south, from sub-Saharan Africa, uh, exotic animals to the um, uh, to the Egyptians. Notice on the bottom, on the right-hand side slide, on the second or third from the right, that guy's bringing huge elephant tusk. Um, and then they have giraffes, and there's a blue monkey hanging off the giraffe a bit to the left. And then... Um, other offerings of people bringing, you know, from above there. Now remember, um, uh, uh, we, we have blue monkeys uh, paintings at Knossos and at Aquatiria on Thera, but these animals are not naturally on those islands. As a matter of fact, they're not even naturally in Egypt, these types of monkeys. These are vervets um, from sub-Saharan Africa, and they were brought up to Egypt um, as we can see here, once again, on this slide, on the bottom here, there's one hanging off, there's a blue monkey hanging off the um, uh, uh, neck of, of the giraffe. So this indicates the trade route by which the uh, Minoans um, got, their, got the blue monkeys. Uh, and as you can see in the picture on the left, you know, they are uh, sort of very, you know, bluish, bluish green, bluish gray. Um, and what's interesting too is that blue is a pretty expensive dye as far as we can tell. Um, and so, uh, uh, you know, they, they, a lot of money was spent to use this color. Um, in any case, it shows that, that part of the gift exchange between royalty amongst, you know, lots of wealth, as I'll show you, you know, uh, as you can see there, are these animals. Um, I should point out that on the, on the top register on the right, the third guy from the right is carrying an ingot. And here we see a close-up of um, the Nubian for the land of Punt, um, where people were, uh, these men are uh, bringing the, um, these ebony logs um, and some sort of panther. Now, one of the ways we know who's who is because um, the kilts uh, change design. And the kilts are very telling of... Um, the ethnicity of the people shown. Here's some more examples. These people are bringing myrrh trees. Um, and, you know, um, carrying, you know, sharing the carrying of this long stick, which has uh, vessels hanging off the ends of it, um, and jewelry. Here, once again, going back to the Nubians with the... Um, uh, 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 the you know the panther and the ivory and uh, you can see on the right there a guy carrying that uh, elephant tusk and there's a blue monkey on top of it and then down to the bottom left uh, we see um, a blue monkey behind a baboon who's behind this this you know um, tiger or panther of some sort. Once again though the important point is that the um, exotic animals uh, were part of the gift exchange. And here, once again, just to show you some uh, 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 more details what we were showing before, um, you know, these uh, gentlemen here um, uh, uh, have, you know, uh, uh, birds they killed on the bottom left and vessels of other, with other goods in them. Um, and then above, we can see some cattle and then offerings in the hands. Now back to the Keftiu. Um, those are the people in the middle there, and we know from their kilts that they are uh, uh, Minoans. Um, Keftiu just being the 
Egyptian word for the Cretans. Um, and we also know from the shoes that they're wearing that those are Cretan style shoes. I won't go into the details of that, but um, we do have examples of what their shoes look like from statues. And once again, we can see that the um, uh, uh, um, there's blue monkeys being brought um, both uh, from p the people above the Keftiu and the people below the Keftiu. So we can see here what the exchange mechanism was, and these were probably high-ranking gift exchanges um, that would come up from sub-Saharan Africa to Egypt and then from Egypt over to the Aegean. I noticed, by the way, that what the uh, Keftiu, the Benoans, are carrying are primarily um, crafts, right? They're not bringing any animals or, uh, or, or things like uh, ivory or wood. Um, they're being things that they made. And um, we believe that the... Uh, you were known for that, um, in addition to, uh, by quite frankly, being good wall painters. And one of the things that we're starting to learn as well is that the Keftiu, um would be, would they themselves come to Egypt to uh, do some wall painting, as well as go to other palaces like in the, in the, in the Near East. Uh, and just notice that in their in the sort of typical, typical way that Egyptians show the human form, with the head and the legs in profile and the torso frontal. And here, once again, is a, uh, I just want to show you this one here um, with these nice kilts and everything uh, um, and shoes. Uh, and the um, man on the right is carrying a big, big ingot, um, which I've discussed um, in the, uh, when I was talking about bronze. And this is a way you transported um, large amounts of this metal. Um, and this is just one tomb in the, in the Theban tombs um, or in the Valley of the Kings. Uh, there are many designs, decorative motifs um, that are used to paintings that we now recognize to be Minoan in style. A lot of these were found before Arthur Evans really found the um, uh, Minoan cultures. So it wasn't clear for the longest time that in fact they were being influenced by Minoan art or indeed uh, 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 Min they were Minoan painters down there. Now we know that works both ways, right? The Egyptians obviously had influence on the Minoans as well. But this is just one fun example of uh, the uh, international connections that were emerging in the late Bronze Age, which we see here with the Minoans, and then we'll talk about the Mycenaeans um, uh, shortly. And so there's just a greater sort of international spirit um, around the Eastern Mediterranean. Um, and we'll stop with that one uh, concerning Rekmire.